Remember that video in which the clan of hyenas surrounded the lion and they were going to eat it? Yes, hyenas are truly dangerous only when they work in a team and attack stealthily. But what's a lone hyena supposed to do? That's right, look for carrion or small rodents. But what if it stumbled across an entire lion pride? Escape is hardly an option. Any lioness is faster than a hyena, which means it has to find... What do you want, Steve? Okay, let's take a closer look at that. It may seem weird, but sometimes hiding in plain sight is the best idea in the world. A spotted hyena was calmly feasting on a dead elephant when its scent attracted seven male lions at once. Seven lions versus one hyena. The odds don't look that good. As soon as the lions approached, the hyena did something ingenious. It hid inside the elephant. That is, literally, it got into the belly cavity and hid there. Although deadly opponents were having lunch very close by. It's not clear if the lions didn't really see the hyena or simply chose to ignore it because they wanted to eat more than fight. Whatever the case, the hyena waited out the most dangerous moments, and then when things quieted down, it got out and immediately reached the third cosmic velocity. Basically, it ran away. One of the lions, of course, pretended to be trying to catch up with it, though it seemed like he was way more interested in the elephant carcass. Apparently, getting inside your lunch is a fairly common strategy. Here, for example, we have another hyena which was taken by surprise by an enemy clan. To avoid conflict, it hid in the carcass of an elephant. And these are just examples, so to speak, from the first page of Google search results. All in all, it's a really good way to protect yourself, waiting in a one-way burrow where no one can sneak up on you from behind. You can also snack on the walls of your shelter while waiting. Though only the boldest animals risk doing that. Usually hyenas rely on their smarts, not courage. These are damn cunning animals that know exactly what to do to achieve the desired result. For example, they don't let anyone take their prey away. You can of course fight fiercely for it, or you can just hide in the water. When hyenas attack in a clan, they can't eat all the meat in one go all the time. Hunting down a large prey is a great success, so hyenas cannot just throw it away. When this happens, they store leftover food in the water. Wildlife photographers, naturalists, and scientists specializing in hyenas have repeatedly noticed how these predators dragged whole carcasses, such as zebras, into the water, then ate them right there. There are also reports of hyenas diving to retrieve their meat stash from the bottom. Of course, raising some kind of zebra from the bottom is simply impossible for a hyena, but it can tear off a piece of meat. Scientists speculate that meat is better preserved in the water. But even if the hyena ate too much, well, for example, it got too greedy, got too carried away, or there was no suitable reservoir for hiding the prey nearby, it knows exactly how to fix this problem. It's clear that the animal that ate too much becomes slower and more vulnerable. These are unacceptable disadvantages for living in the wild. In addition, after feeding, the hyena's body temperature rises, and the stomach full of blood and meat presses on the diaphragm. This makes it difficult for the animal to breathe. In short, there's nothing good about it, and so hyenas wallow. They find some kind of puddle or lie down in shallow water, simply allowing the water to cool their body properly. Most likely, water also makes breathing easier. After such a rest, hyenas are reinvigorated and ready to go hunting again. This way of dealing with overeating is not so bad compared to the other one, which is thankfully pure fiction. The 16th century naturalist Conrad Gessner claimed that hyenas gorged themselves so thoroughly they had to force themselves between two trees or boulders to squeeze their food out of both ends. It sounds like utter nonsense, but in the 16th century, data was barely verified, whereas stories about hyenas being creepy and vile creatures were popular. Moreover, hyenas have long been considered scavengers, cunning and treacherous creatures playing dirty. Although, in fact, hyenas kill up to 95% of the prey they eat. So these are very hurtful prejudices. Why are you bullying me? To be fair, some of the hyenas' habits do look… weird. Hyenas bite off buffalo testicles <coughs> and tails, too, and they do it on purpose. These predators <coughs> choose a weak buffalo that has strayed from the herd, sneak <coughs> up on it from behind, sniff it, and then take a bite. And no, the hyenas aren't trying to humiliate the buffalo or make sure it'll never be a dad. Most often, this behavior is associated with a lack of suitable prey, well, or some other nutritional problems. 
Hyenas have to hunt for something as easy to reach as possible, like testicles and tails, which can be eaten without killing prey. The chances of success are higher at night when the buffaloes are sleeping, and I really feel sorry for them. Uh, I wouldn't want to wake up and discover a hyena's been around. Remember Disney's Lion King? There the hyenas teamed up with Scar because they didn't have enough food. They were going to take over the Pride Lands and stuff like that? In reality, such a scenario is unlikely, but we know at least one example of an alliance between hyenas and wolves. In the Negev Desert in southern Israel, living conditions are frankly tough. There's not enough food. Therefore, at least one striped hyena has been seen running with a pack of gray wolves. It seems like the predators used each other's strengths in order to get the maximum benefit and save themselves from starvation. Wolves are faster than hyenas and can kill large animals. The hyena is excellent at finding rubbish and is a better digger, and its jaws can crack open bones like 10 cans. Remember this thought. I'll get back to it later. An alliance with the wolves is not the only smart move on the part of the hyenas. They know very well how vultures behave. Yes, hyenas have a very keen sense of smell, but why bother when you can just watch the sky? As soon as the hyena notices a large group of vultures and realizes that the birds are about to descend to the ground, it also hurries there. Wherever the vultures are, there's got to be some dead animals to feed on. It's important to run quickly before the smell attracts other predators, so the hyenas came up with the idea of navigating using the vultures. In fact, the birds are their eyes in the sky, and they don't even suspect that the hyenas are using them. Now imagine you're exploring a cave in Saudi Arabia and suddenly discover bones. And not just a couple, but tens of thousands of bones of horses, gazelles, goats, camels, donkeys, hyenas, and humans. What would be the first thought that comes to your mind? Perhaps there was some ancient cemetery here, or a place of worship for prehistoric people? Maybe this is evidence of a cruel sacrifice. Well, not quite. Turned out that the discovered cave was a feasting ground of hyenas for thousands of years. When archaeologists did radiocarbon dating, they found that the bones date back to several eras spanning over 7,000 years. That is, hyenas literally came to the same place, ate there, buried bones, and left, and so it went on, generation after generation, for thousands of years. That's what I call family traditions. But why would hyenas need bones in the first place? The reason is much more complicated than just the inability to get rid of unnecessary stuff. As I said, these animals can save food for later if there's too much of it. When there's no water around, hyenas bury bones and pieces of meat in shallow pits. And hyenas really love bones. Nature's blessed them with incredibly powerful jaws, allowing them to crush bones in order to get to the bone marrow. The substance so nutritious, it's really worth the effort. In addition, bones are also a source of nutrients, such as calcium and phosphorus, and you can never have too much of them. Especially if you periodically have to starve and you need to make the most of each meal you have. Searching for bones and rotting meat, hyenas could dig up human graves because, well, they're animals. They got no respect for the dead, and in the Middle Ages, such behavior terrified people. In illustrated bestiaries of the time, the hyena is depicted as a deceitful, filthy creature known to dwell in graveyards and dig up the recently deceased to eat their corpses. Since the hyena is a nocturnal animal, these events take place at night, which emphasizes their darkness. In addition to eating corpses, hyenas were given other wicked characteristics. It was believed that they were able to change sexes from male to female and vice versa, as befits deceitful creatures. It's also been claimed that hyenas mimic the sound of a human voice in order to lure people out of their homes and eat them. Hyenas could presumably put spells on dogs, steal away their voices, and paralyze anyone by circling them three times. In short, they were evil incarnate. Bushy and hairy and stinky. And man, are they ugly. <laughs> but I was interested in the story about mimicking of the human voice. Perhaps hyenas are really capable of making some not quite animal sounds. <laughs> Meet Krakata, the mythical dog wolf that supposedly lived in India and Ethiopia. According to another theory, Krakata could be a combination between a hyena and a lion. In short, 
All descriptions of the mysterious beast were as weird as possible. Pliny the Elder mentions two crocodile-like creatures, the swiftest of all beasts, about the size of a donkey, with a stag's haunches, a lion's neck, tail and breast, badger's head, cloven hoof, mouth opening right back to the ears, and ridges of bone in place of rows of teeth. This animal is reported to imitate the voices of human beings. The Byzantine scholar Photius and the ancient Roman writer Claudius Alianus also mention the ability of the crocata to mimic human sounds. Alas, scientists of today are certain that mythical crocatas never existed. Most likely, people were simply too impressed with the features of hyenas. They can really make unnerving sounds. Just remember their famous laugh. <laughs> and when you live long before the golden age of modern science, it's not surprising that hyenas seem like monsters to you. Over time, people have studied hyenas thoroughly enough to understand which of the ancient testimonies is true and which appeared due to rich imagination. Yes, yeah, stories about changing sex and others like these turned out to be fiction, but scientists have found out that hyenas are much more like humans than one might think. These animals live in groups that can grow to over a hundred individuals, but there's a clear order and hierarchy within their clans. These are real social groups. See for yourself. In human society, high-ranking people pass their useful connections to their kids. And the same happens in the hyena society. The high-ranking offspring is more likely to inherit friends, acquaintances, and other necessary connections than those who are lower in the clan's social ladder. For example, the daughters of the high-ranking hyenas live longer, likely due to being cared for for a longer period of time by a large number of individuals. Since hyena society is matriarchal, status is passed from mother to daughter, just like all the accompanying perks. And even if the mother hyena dies, her kids still continue to communicate with the same hyena friends. In short, all this looks really human-like. See you later.